Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll MMA podcast. I'm your host, Sky. We got your host, Damien, Jay, CJ in the building. We are back as usual. Um, let's go ahead and talk about this weekend's card. Marlon, Cheeto Vera versus Corey Sandhagen. How, how did y'all feel about it? I think for me, the most impressive thing was the fucking judge who gave the fight to Cheeto. That's the one thing that stood out to me going, what the fuck did you just watch, my guy? Like, how? Just tell me how. What rounds? What? 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 Did <laughs> oh, he must have had some money on the fight. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So I don't know if you guys know who that judge is. But he refereed a fight the night before, and he almost got a fighter killed. Was that, that was him? Judge? That was the him. Guy? Yes, that was him. Because I think his name yeah. was like Frank, Frank something. Let me pull it up. I think that was the same guy that was refing, and he was the judge on the Cheeto card. And the guy was in the triangle that got transitioned into the armbar. Yeah, I think that was, it was wild. The same. Yeah. It was the same guy. Damn. So you can but, do any any job? Yeah, because Dan Mergliata is a judge as well, too. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But he's he not might. doing both at the same time. No, oh, he no, is. No. He, he is. is. I'm pretty sure he's he uh, Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> Rude boy, top shata. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But as so far as the fun. card goes, uh, I enjoyed the card for what it was. There were some pretty exciting fights on there. Um, some up and comers. I guess we can start talking about, you know, what was on the card. But, you know, shout out to CJ Vergara pulling off one of those crazy ass comebacks. Maybe comeback of the year. What you think? Comeback of the year so far? Yeah, I think so far uh, for sure. I can see that as a. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to see uh, this judge now that you didn't point that out. Because if it was him. That's a problem. <laughs> That's no, no, no. It, it wasn't him. It wasn't him. Uh, let me pull it up on, on the screen. I was Joel like, no. Ojeda. I think mm -hmm. that's his name. Joel Ojeda. Yeah. They um, need to stop uh, photoshopping these dudes six packs. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Joel Ojeda was the one that had that. Frank. Oh, I can't even think of his last name right now. But Frank was the one, this is a guy named Frank. That was the referee that, like, the guys passed out in an arm bar. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Oh, yeah. I remember um, seeing that. Yeah. I thought that the card, um, I didn't necessarily get a chance to, like, thoroughly, thoroughly watch the card because I had a lot of stuff to do this weekend. But I did catch CJ. Um because J Jason and I always try to watch, like, CJ whenever he fights just because um, we seen him fight at the Contender Series and, like, like, we met his mom and all that stuff. So, you know, we try to support him. It's been rough for CJ. CJ been missing weight. He been losing fights. He ain't been looking that good. First round comes out. I'm like, come on, CJ. You in San Antonio. Like, you can't fumble the bag here. Man, that first round was terrifying. And I like De Silva. Um, even though mm. I think he's going by a different last name now. But, um, yeah. Y'all know who I'm talking Lac about. Lac mm -hmm. Lacerda. Listen, your boy was, they want to talk about fastest man in the world. They want to say that Izzy's a runner. Your boy CJ was in there taking <laughs> a lot. He was like, hey, I got to get my wits back. Hey, do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. He was able to come back, get it done. Um, yeah, that's definitely my comeback of the year. But, I mean, I thought overall, when it came to Cheeto versus Corey Sanhagen, I was really disappointed in um in Cheeto. Like I was just expecting him to be able to, you know, get in his bag and he never was able to. And I think a part of that had to do with him not being able to really figure out Corey Sanhagen. I think a lot of the credit I give most of the credit to Corey because Corey looked on. That looked like one of his best performances mm -hmm. we've seen. Um, and I think that like it's easy to be like, oh, he wasn't on, or you know, he wasn't at his best. But like when you really think about it, it's like Styles make fights, and that probably just was the style for him that he just couldn't – he didn't know where he was. Yeah, he, he started off pretty slow, I feel like. He tried to pick it up, like, in the third round, I think. Mm -hmm. That's probably where the, where the ref gave him the round, honestly. But, yeah, he just didn't 
he, I mean, typically from the fights that I've seen with him, he typically starts pretty slow. He takes a lot of shots, and then it like kind of wakes him up, and then he'd be on point and looking sharp. But yeah, he just could, he couldn't get it going, and I got to give credit to Sanhagen because that fool was on his bicycle, but like in a good way. He wasn't really running; he was, you know, moving side lateral movements, and then pop, 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 hitting him with combos, and then moving again, and it kind of had Marlon looking like, where is he gonna go? So, yeah, it was a good fight though. I I, I did enjoy watching it. Um, I didn't really enjoy watching the fight because it's what we like to call domination. Right. Sure. But I'm going to give 100 percent credit to, uh, to to Corey for stifling and destroying Cheeto. You know, so then the question is, like, I'm thinking now maybe Cheeto's not the guy who we thought he was. Oh, I wouldn't say destroy. He didn't destroy Cheeto. Cheeto left out of there with no marks on his face or body mm -hmm. looking like he Cheeto was barely breathing hard. Like there's he's going to go back and look at that and really be upset. Cause we know he has amazing cardio, but his stomach, I mean, he wasn't even, he didn't even look like he had ran on a treadmill or nothing. Sanhagen was the one that had the physical damage. So I wouldn't say that mm -hmm. Cheeto destroyed him. He outpointed him. He outskilled him, but like he didn't get this. Cheeto didn't get destroyed. He got destroyed. Yeah. The, the, oh. it, it was 5-0. <laughs> what? Right, okay. Let me ask y'all this then. What round or rounds did you give Cheeto? I but see we're talking no 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 it's a very pointed question. I didn't give you any rounds. Okay, so destroyed, got it. That's not destroyed. That's there's a difference. There's a difference in point fighting somebody and winning the fight and destroying. Max Holloway versus Calvin Cater. I'm always gonna bring Max up in here. That was destroyed. Okay. That was devastating. That what happened between Marlon and Cheeto, like I mean Cheeto and um Corey, that Corey dominated that's he won the fight but he didn't damage there was never a moment that you were like oh my god marlon's gonna get out of there he's in trouble and there was never a moment where i felt that Corey was in danger i didn't say i that feel like did. i feel like Corey. you know you say a certain word i feel like Corey outworked them yeah. that's just plain and simple you know the the skills uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh fighters make fights and you know Corey was on his shit a hundred percent he didn't never let him catch up to him his footwork was amazing and i was i was i text guy and i was just like you can't give up two definitive rounds early in the fight and especially if you, you already have that that uh that they already know that you're a slow starter so if you're giving up two rounds that's we already know that you lost those rounds you can't just give those up and thinking you're going to be able to come back so Corey already had those in the bank and then he said, hey, I just got to stay away from you. I'm going to come, pop shot you, get away. I just don't have to take any big shots, and I'm going to just slide in and out of here. He styled on him, plain yeah. and simple. Mm -hmm. You know, he just outworked him. He just looked better. You know, maybe it was that high uh, fight IQ. It was a beautiful fight. You know, Cheeto just never got started. He looked like a stick in the mud. And I, I'm not going to throw Cheeto away for just having one bad night. Corey made him look bad. You know, styles make fight. That footwork was amazing, and he did it for all five rounds. And he was threatening him, threatening him with some type of grappling here and there. Got out yeah. if he couldn't get the takedown. It was a master class, you know. Yeah. Shout out to Corey, the Sandman. How do y'all feel about um, the possibility? I just thought about this right now of seeing um, Cheeto against Peter Yan next. Yeah, I think that that's the, the, the next one. fight to make. I think that's a good fight for Cheeto. I yeah. think that's a good fight for Yan. If Yan can't beat Cheeto. Go to PFL. Oh. Go go back over there to Russia. Damn. Like, like like it's, it's damn Russia. like that. And so they, and they both away. not gonna get they both not gonna get started until the end of the fight. So right. <laughs> they're gonna be downloading <laughs> data. <laughs> they better I mean, make sure that Wi-Fi is ready to go. <laughs> and real quick, before that's used against me, if it's like if he gets dominated by Cheeto, which I don't see happening, but if he gets dominated by Cheeto, okay, yeah, that's a wrap. But like if it's a close fight, a competitive fight, and you lose, then that's <sighs> different. But like. I feel like Peter Yan's skill set, based off of who we think he is, he should be favorable in the fight against Cheeto. Mm -hmm. Um, because they we will match up how... well. Yeah. Yeah. What about yeah. you, Chase? Yeah, I'm. I'm all for it. I think it makes sense. Um, I think <laughs> that is a fight uh, either guy really like can't afford to lose. You know what I mean? Especially in such a a stacked division, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, it was just what two fights ago that Corey got fucked up. 
and now he's got a fresh coat of paint on him. Like no one even thinks about it anymore. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, um, and 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 lastly, sorry to cut you off. Great call out by Corey as well. I mean, it was fucking stupid cringy. If if you're going to be cringy, like lean into it. Don't say, "Hey guys, I'm gonna get, uh, I'm gonna get a little uh, uh, queasy right now." No, get in there and just own it. Yeah. Shout out to Kobe. Yeah, I seen him on. No. Uh, <laughs> I seen him on uh, Ariel Hawani show, Corey Sanhagen, and he was talking about how like he doesn't want to take the easier fight. He feels like the easier fight for him is Sean O'Malley, um, but he felt like the harder fight is you know Marab, and that Marab is is better uh, skilled, and he really wants to you know test himself up against Marab. How do you think Corey matches up with Marab? Oh man. That's that's an interesting fight. But like I always say, Corey has probably the best flying knees that I've seen because he, he hits most of the time that he throws them because uh, normally people just throw flying knees and they miss, but he lands most of the time. So that will help him in, you know, Marab's takedown. But, you know, Marab's fucking relentless. I'd rather me, just me personally, and the styles of fights that I like to watch, I'd rather see him fight Sugar Sean because I know that will just be skill for skill going at it. But, you know, he called on Marab looking for that number one spot. That's a tough fight, you know. Marab is fucking relentless, man. He's literally the machine. And now I seen somebody post it like Marab versus Umar. Uh, yeah, that that's that's that a high jump, cool. though. It's a high jump, but I mean, he's a Dagestani. Like, what's he gonna do? Run through everybody else that's already here? Like, you might as well put him up against Marab so we can see what he's made of. You know, what's he? He's just gonna ruin somebody else's record. oh shit i'm dead i'm dead yeah yeah i mean 135 like i've said i'm standing on it 135 is the best division right now it's just that's just how i just i mean the top 15 is just nasty we got some you know amazing fights that are taking place there and it's just it's just hot. Like I think everybody's matched up except for Dominic Cruz, Song Yadong. That's it. Dominic Cruz oh, and Song Yadong are the only ones that's oh, not matched. Dominic mad. Cruz is supposed to fight uh Cody Garber, right? I don't know why they trying to done Cody off like that. <laughs> Cody had one win. He trying to get his he trying to get his shit back, and now y'all gonna dud him off like that. Don't don't make Dominic Cruz go in there and style on him. Don't do that. <laughs> and then we got we got Figgy creeping in the in the scene as well, too. Figgy popping up. I'd like to see him against Peter Yan. I mean, yeah, 135 is just Oh, nasty. yeah, I forgot about uh, Figgy. I wonder when is he going to fight next? That's your boy. How do you forget about him? I fuck oh, I'm I sorry because he lost. That's not Viva true. Mexico. That's not Viva true. Mexico. Hey, I stay with losers. I don't give a fuck. Hey, and you know what? That's so important to talk about. Like, just within the MMA community, there are so many fans to where, like, they favorite fighter loses, or not they favorite fighter, but you know, like a fighter loses and they just start shitting on them. Like, especially like the the hate that they've been chatting off about when it comes to Kamaru has been insane. Absolutely insane. I'm like, y'all acting like that man wasn't a seven time defending champion. Y'all acting like he wasn't getting ready to pass. Like, y'all acting like he was just some bum off the street that just showed up and, and been like, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> like, champions lose. I had this one guy on YouTube who was like trying to go back and forth with me. And he's like, you know, he's like, yeah, but none of them are champions now. Cause I've really been arguing a lot on that, that other post with Drikus, you know, him talking about the African fighter thing. And. You know, and I'm like, hey, once a champion, always a champion. He's like, oh, get that shit out of here. And I'm like, you MMA fans are like just weird. Like y'all are weird. Mm. There's no other sport yeah. where we like yeah. disrespect champions. Like y'all still talking about Jordan, 93, 95, 96. Like, come on. Like once a champ, always a champ, especially when you defend the actual belt. Like y'all just start acting like these people lose and y'all like, oh man, it's over. They're, they man. suck. They say they suck. Yeah. They fucking can. But you know what I was going to say about that guy? It's hard enough to just win a fucking fight in the UFC, let alone be a champion, let alone defend the belt. Like, we got to relax mm-hmm. and chill and let these guys be great, man. Like, God, like I always say, y'all wouldn't even make the weight cut because I know my fat ass wouldn't make the weight cut. Respect these guys, even though the ones I don't like. I respect the work that they put in to get into the damn cage, man. Like, fuck. I'm what, really, uh, somebody, yeah. Go ahead, uh, Jay. No, 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 finish the rant. 
uh what i was gonna say you made me forget bro <laughs> um what i was gonna say is uh like i said you couldn't make the weight cut respect these fighters and i just be online talking so i know that the work that they put in it's it takes a mile miles and miles and miles to get to the belt hold the belt fight the best constantly and over and over and over again you have one bad night and now you fucking suck. It's like, we have to chill on that shit, bro. Everybody rides meat until they lose. So, mm-hmm. people got to chill. Did you say everyone rides meat? Yeah, <laughs> them niggas be, they be riding meat, bro. They really do. Oh. They really do. Straight guzzling. Yeah. Straight guzzling. Hey, <laughs> it ain't no pause either. Y'all, they be, need to fast forward on that, you know? They uh. fucking meat riders. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Like it's really bad. And like I don't even like. Are these actual fans or are they just like people on the internet? Like that's that's how I'm classifying them. Like I don't think that these are the people that are paying for the pay per view or buying tickets to go see it. Like there's a huge difference in MMA fans. Mm-hmm. Like y'all that just like just you know y'all don't actually support, but yet y'all the loudest on the internet talking about fighting pay and what they deserve, but y'all ain't bought not a t-shirt. Y'all ain't y'all ain't supporting monetarily to where they can actually get money at all. Y'all just on the internet just talking all of 17 years mm-hmm. old, like still... Probably never you know, even been punched in the face the before. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> shut up. Everyone's yeah. got a plan to get punched in the face. Yeah, yeah. Facts. So, you know. It, it, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for next week's card, but we'll get to that next week. Um, but this weekend, there are some events that are happening, although the UFC won't be, um, although the UFC won't be going, we are going to have PFL and Game Brand Boxing is also going to be happening. So I'm excited to check that and Bellator. out. Bellator. And Bellator. Oh yeah, Bellator is going to be popping off as well. Um, I'm in there, so look for me. Look for me. I'll be in there, y'all. <laughs> hey, um, let's. I, we were talking about it before uh, we hopped on the podcast. I'm very adamant that Marlon Marais needs to stop fighting immediately. I feel the same way about him that I feel about Cody Garbrandt, um, which is Marlon's been knocked out in the first round five times in a row. Wow. Five times wow. in the first round. And now he's about to go fight the PFL champion, Brendan Lockney. What do you think's going to happen? Oh, Lockney's going to, yeah. Come on. Come oh, on. Man. Then, hey. PFL, what'd you say? I was going to say, you know, once a glass breaks, especially five times, it's hard to put it back together. <laughs> so, ooh, man, and he is not getting younger. <laughs> Um, I think overall PFL, like I've said it before, I think PFL makes terrible business decisions when it comes to the fighters that they sign. The only good UFC prospect that they signed was, uh, Shane uh, Burgos. Cause Shane is still young. He was in like hovering around the top 15 of the UFC featherweights. Um, and he was. In my opinion, he wasn't ever going to be a UFC champion, but he was an exciting fighter. You knew that when Shane stepped in the building, like he was going to put it all out there. Um, And he's a good fighter. He has the potential, I believe, to win in PFL, but he still has a lot of tread left on him. You know what I mean? When you start signing Marlon Marais, who's on a five-fight losing streak by knockout, well, the fifth one came from his debut in PFL. He had lost four in a row. Brutal knockouts. Not like normal, like brutal knockouts. And then you sign... Uh, Thiago Santos, who has no knees, who just got TKO'd by Jamal <laughs> Hill. Like, what, what are you doing? Like, I understand that these fighters, it makes sense for them because, you know, when you leave the UFC and you go and you sign somewhere else, you have more leverage. You have a name on you now that, that like, the general fan MMA fan base is familiar with. So, you know, they're hoping that, you know, they'll follow you over to the PFL and watch you. So they get he's getting paid, you know, more money. But at the same time, like, as if I'm PFL... Why? Why, why, why? why would I sign him? You know, why would I sign Jeremy Stevens? Jeremy Stevens, I think, yeah. is what, like 36, 37? And Jeremy's been in the, was in the UFC for years. Years. He's been yeah. in a lot of battles. You know what I mean? And there were some other people that they signed. And it was just like, well, y'all just signing anybody. Like, y'all becoming Bellator. Well, I would definitely sign think, Jeremy Stevens. I think they're doing that because they're coming from the UFC. So, 
their <laughs> fans over there might tune in to PFL to watch them fight. Yeah. And they probably got more fans than some of the great fighters at PFL, honestly. Mm -hmm. Brother right here is the dude that got knocked out by um uh Kasagana is the guy that got knocked out by Buckley. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I watched I watched him fight. Uh, I watched him fight 2 weeks ago. He did he did all right. Oh, he did okay. Yeah. Kasagana. That, that was the spin yeah. the spinning back kick. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Mortal Kombat you know. kick. Um <laughs> But yeah, I think like stuff like that, it, it, it's tough. It's, it's tough for PFL. But PFL has some good cards that's coming up. Um, there's the Game Bread Boxing that's going to be happening this weekend as well. <laughs> is that what you that their first about? Ever? I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to. No, it's uh, their their second card. I'm just trying to think um, how fast Showtime is going to eat the dirt. I'm just trying to think before he's humping the ring. Who? Oh, Showtime. Oh, against yeah. your boy oh. Roy Jones Jr. He's playing Roy Jones Jr. Y'all must have forgot. What? That's <laughs> crazy. My man, my man is about to be humping the mat, ass straight in the air. David, I, I love that. Damn, line. I kind of want to see this. I kind of. Hey, you see gotta watch it. See. Okay, so it's Roy <laughs> Jones Jr. versus Anthony Pettis. All right, Jose Aldo versus Jose Jeremy Aldo. Stevens. That's a Vitor nice. Belfort, even though he's old, whatever, against the Alligator. You Jacqueray. know, oh, I mean, they came with the top of the card is heavy with MMA legends who want to mm. box. So I, I, I really right. like that. Um, yeah, that's but, dope. Yeah, and the card goes on, but but you know we're gonna be there for the top. The top, the last four fights is gonna be like really where it's at. So, um, I, Roy Jones, fifty six. What is he like? Fifty five? He, he's somewhere. He up there. Uh, Roy is probably what 53, 54. Oh, yeah, he up there for sure, for sure. And still gonna be the brakes off that nigga. Let me see, he's 54. <laughs> yeah, Roy Jones 54. is 54. Yeah, getting ready to fight Anthony Showtime Pettis. But come on, it's Roy. It's Roy. That's like, crazy. That's listen, crazy that this is the fight. There is a difference. Just like, you know, if Roy was going to go and fight him in MMA, like, nigga, what are you about to do? You know, yeah. shout out to uh, James Tony, who came over and fought uh, Randy Couture. I mean, y'all young bucks probably don't know about this shit, but an old school nigga right here let you know what happened. Hey, got destroyed. <laughs> destroyed <laughs> on a fucking hey, ankle pick. Bro, ah. hey, his foot was horrible in there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but yeah. shout out to Ray Mercer though. You remember that? <laughs> Ray Mercer got one. Yeah, he got him one. Knocked out Tim Sylvia's ass. So yeah, but that but, motherfucker yeah. was stupid enough trying to trying to go blow for blow. Again, you don't fight a boxer in boxing, my guy. It's just not. It's, no. it's not a great life choice. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not the same. No, it's not the same. Just like they would not, you know, they wouldn't do well in MMA. It's not the same. It's a whole different sport. Yeah. Yeah. You are right. Gotta respect yeah, damn. Them. I got to I gotta catch this. Yeah. <laughs> where, yeah where is this even at? The two. Uh, it, they're doing it in uh, Milwaukee in um, mm. Showtime Pettis' uh, backyard. How oh, many rounds are they doing? They're doing eight. Eight. Oh, and it's a pro shit. bout. This ain't exhibition. This ain't play play. This gonna go on Roy Jones record. Roy Jones said so this is imagine, easy money. Imagine if Showtime wins. Imagine if Showtime <laughs> beats Joe. I mean beats uh, Roy. I'd be hurt. Roy's my favorite boxer. Crazy. I can't Roy? count it out. Yeah. I can, I'm nah, counting he, it out. He, he's t he's too slick, man. Roy too slick. I'm counting yeah, it out. Even at his age, you remember when he fought Mike Tyson? Yeah, but that's Mike. That's Mike. Who is a boxer? Yeah. Who is a boxer? Yeah. Who who's who is as well? Just you know, it's just Mike. Like there's nothing. Like yes, there's no like superlative that, that like exhibition type yes. fight though, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Damn, that's what's going I gotta, on. I gotta find where to watch that. My bad. Yeah, I, I'll hit you up. Yeah, I should I should tell y'all. Wait, let me look. Let me check out the website to see. If it says how we can watch it, cause uh, I don't see it on here, but you know we'll figure it he out. Said on oh. the tube. He said on the tube. <laughs> that's, that's bad promoting, then. That's bad. Uh, that's bad promoting. Yeah. 
You're right. I should You're be right. right there cool. live on blah, blah, blah. Even here, you know, Showtime, like you know where to watch it at. Right. Let me actually, I because I do want to watch it, so I want to know. What's it going to be? Uh, what, what are they actually going to be showing it on? Damn, both Pettis brothers are going to get fucked up this weekend. It's I guess crazy. it's just game. At, no, no. Uh, the, the the little brother ain't fighting this weekend. I guess it's just going to be on pay-per-view, which means y'all know what that means. On the internet. Stream, Shit. stream, stream. Somebody, oh, that's somebody on TikTok they gonna have it. They're going to have it on UFC Fight Pass. Oh, oh. sweet. Oh, yeah. That means there I'm going to get it. No, 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 no. That means you already got it. <laughs> yeah, facts, facts. Um, yes, yeah, so you can get it on pay per view or you can get it on UFC Fight Pass. Um, but I get. Anyways, uh, Bella Torres this weekend. CJ said he's gonna be in the building. Cats and Gano's making her comeback. Uh, I don't know who Gomes versus James is. I ain't gonna lie to you. Who is me neither? <laughs> well, wait, go back, go back for his cat. Who is McCourt? Leah McCourt, I don't watch. I don't know. Can I see a better picture of her, please? Because uh, <laughs> 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 you know, I'm like over you. you might, we might be able to get this work. <laughs> you know. Let's see. My uh, little slide into my DMs. Take my ass off of private for a day. Because I'm sure that she wants to slide in your DMs. <laughs> Obviously. She ain't got nothing uh, else to do. Oh, uh, I mean, you know, I, I can think it's something else better for her to do. All right. Just got a new Instagram follower. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. But yeah, so that'll be Kat Singano. Um, like, so you just got tickets regardless. You was like, hey, you just want to yeah. go see some MMA. Yeah, I need some energy, you know. Yeah, I fuck with Bellator. I don't know people on the card, so... I'm gonna start just like Jay said the other day, man. Just do live your experiences and fuck things. And I was just like, fuck it, let's go. I don't give a fuck. We're gonna go in there, have fun, drink some beer, hope people get knocked out, choked yeah. out, Listen, beat up. Um, I just want to go have fun. Sometimes, you know, and he, he, everyone you know who, who knows me, I'm in Minnesota right now, and they have like the regional fight scene here. And sometimes it's great just walking in, like not knowing who to root for, not knowing who's supposed to be this dude or that dude. Just saying, yo, I'm about to sit down and watch these two get it in. You know what I'm saying? And he's hey, gonna do what he do. Yep. Right. Yeah. Shout out to Damien. Damien be catching his fights every so often. So shit, y'all go support the smaller organizations and things like that one day you might see one of these dudes in the ufc or something one day oh, really? you might be the champ That's somewhere why. so i'll be pulling up i have been pulling up to where my my boys be competing and i'll be there early catching all the fights you know and they be starting mm. all the fights yeah with the headgear i'll be watching the little kids they be going at it i'm like damn y'all really trained already you know like <laughs> it, it'd be a good time for sure and you get to like vibe with the people you know you be hearing that them cheering for their for their son or their family member or whatever and it's like okay i'm gonna go for them too then because you know y'all out here supporting this stuff so yeah it's it's dope to just be surrounded yeah. by people like that honestly yeah, you don't even you don't even need to know the amazing. fighters you're still gonna be entertained <laughs> facts are you not entertained <laughs> yeah yeah, and them little kids do be going at it. Like I've been to some mm -hmm. of the tournaments, and I was like, I didn't realize they let little kids like that scrap. Listen, yeah. let me tell y'all. I seen this kid. No, no, no. They were doing uh, so. Like the one I went to, it was like a whole bunch of different. Like all the mixed martial arts were there, right? So everybody had their diff different discipline they were competing in. The karate kids. Yo, this dude hit him with a spinning back kick to the dome. Sleep. Slinging. Was a kid? I caught it live. Yeah, he had to be. He was like a, a teenager, so he was like 16, okay. 17. And he wasn't, oh. so, I guess, like at that competition, like you weren't supposed to, like, he ended up losing because he was yeah. too aggressive. Like, no, you weren't supposed out. to be that aggressive. Yeah. I don't know what it was. I think it was like point karate. That yeah. man was, that kid was asleep, and the coaches got pissed, and they was like, what the fuck? Da, 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 da. And then the kid gets up, and he's like, no, I want to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I was losing it. I was like, nah, this yeah. is awesome. <laughs> nah, you go to those those fights, they have like no no knockout tournaments where it is like specifically point fighting to get techniques and stuff. But when you when you fighting and somebody's hitting you and you hit somebody else, all that shit goes out the window. You trying to hurt that person <laughs> and you trying to make sure you ain't getting hurt. 
because that's what it is. Like they'll they even warn me like, hey, a little lighter on the punches, but you don't even be hearing the shit. Hey, <laughs> you just like tunnel hey, vision. One point, <laughs> hey, every point hurts differently. You hit me in the liver, that hurts a lot less. I mean, that hurts a lot more. <laughs> Listen, I, I'll tell y'all. You can't really tell. When uh, when I went to Thailand, um, I don't know if I told the story now, but I went to Thailand, and yeah, in Thailand, him. the the national, you know, a little some some po pimping. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, went to like the national stadium there, sat in the second row because it was like twenty five bucks USD. You know, I didn't know that they started off with children. I'm talking about like eight, nine year olds, uh, no headgear, full contact. And I seen at that point, they probably got up to maybe like a 11, 12 year old, you know, literally get knocked the fuck out of the ring on a flying oh, knee no. and literally landed in front of me. I was like, oh, shit, this kid is dead. Like, I'm ready to go home after. I don't want to see a kid die I'm <laughs> about that life. You know what I'm saying? Shit was wild. That's why yeah, that's, that's fighters, definitely on my bucket list. They the most savage. They yeah, the most on my savage because they so, like, eat, breathe, sleep Muay Thai. That's all they know growing up. Shit's nuts. That's well, why they be so good and calm and chill. A, a lot of the times what they do there is they were like sell their children to these Thai schools. What? It, yes, it's a hundred percent facts. They literally like a poor family can't really support their kid. They'll take the kid, they'll sell them to a Thai school, and they say, "Yo, this is what you do now." And that's all they do: eat, sleep, drink, Muay Thai. And then you look at the fighter pay. I'm not. We're not gonna go into it this weekend. We're not gonna go this way again. I know. <laughs> but if you look at it, and then we say, like, man, we get paid so low. But then, like, I think I was talking to CJ after after the pod last weekend. I was like, man, but if you think about, it, like, I watched a whole documentary on the Philippines where like people were selling their kidney and their kids' kidneys for twenty five hundred dollars. Selling their kidneys because twenty five hundred dollars was like the same as five years worth of salary in in the Philippines at the time of that doc that that documentary was made, and it's like life is just different in different places. And until you see like yeah. how people struggle and things that people will do for money, like we sit here and we scoff at somebody making you know ten thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars a fight when like these people will literally kill you. They will literally kill you for that money. Like it's. This very sad. Facts. Yeah. Now, one question I did have that's probably like suited more for like um for for Damien. How come Muay Thai? Because it is like to me, it's like super. Um, it's a lot more aggressive and like vicious. Like when I'm watching it. Um, how come that doesn't translate as well? Um, like a Muay Thai fighter, right? Doesn't translate as well into MMA. And I'm not talking about like the grappling aspect. I just mean like as far as like the striking. Like if they're going up against like another boxer or a kickboxer. Well, I feel like it does translate pretty well. I actually like enjoying watching the Muay Thai style fighters that be in the UFC, but it's not like traditional. You won't see them like traditional because they are going to get taken down. They are going to get grappled. Yeah. And you don't want to do that, if, especially if you're strictly a Thai type fighter and that's your specialty. Right. So that's kind of why it doesn't really translate. And I see people like Khalil Roundtree try it out and stuff. And sometimes it'll work because the style type fighter that they're fighting, they're not really concerned about getting grappled and wrestled or whatever because they got the defense to take care of that stuff. But he go up against someone that's like, uh, let's say, uh, Robert Whitaker. Like he gonna take you down and he gonna right. he gonna ragdoll you around because he's not trying to stand up and strike with you, <laughs> right? Type thing, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I I like watching the the stand up fighters. That's why Piotr Jan is like one of my favorite fighters. It just yeah. sucks that he can't he can't handle the wrestling and shit. So, hey, when Khalil Roundtree came back from Thailand and he was in he was like hitting that he was bouncing on the foot. Hey. That man that was, was so different different. when he came back from there. He yeah. was he, he been winning ever since then. Like that was the same fight that he took old boy's leg out with that oblique kick and just tore everything up in there. Yeah, that that that, that was nasty. Um speaking of go ahead, Jace. I was just to answer your question, I think also one of the reasons why maybe the Muay Thai does not translate well here is because one, it's just not well promoted, right? People don't know the rules, people don't know what's going on. And uh i'd be interested to know if y'all have any say about this i think like a good majority of mma fans especially hardcores 
are former r- r- wrestlers. You know, the U.S. is a very mm. heavy wrestling-based yeah. country. So these True. people who they follow from high school, collegiate, you know what I mean? And maybe they didn't go pro or do the Olympics, but, you know, a lot of these guys have former wrestling backgrounds and people can relate and people, oh, can single, double. Like, we tend to enjoy something more when we understand it, you know, and we understand what they're doing, the high crotch, you know what I mean? Yeah. Unfortunately, That's I got, like, a very boxing, low crotch. Right. Yeah. Uh, before we move on, I want to say shout out to Ratang and then shout out to Superlek. I don't know if you guys watched the fights on Friday, but that fight was amazing. That was a kickboxing fight, not Muay Thai, but he does both. But before we move on, yeah, go watch one FC, guys. Go watch one FC. Go watch one FC. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, I think the main thing that like the reason why I actually need to watch more one FC is because. I want to get more familiar with like the the rule differences between like Muay Thai and kickboxing. You know, like what is like what is the difference? There's certain things that are different. Like uh, in Muay Thai, you can sweep with okay. the high sweeps and stuff, which is like mm-hmm. the instep or like the out, uh, outside of sweeping the foot. You mm-hmm. can't do that in kickboxing. It's just little uh, things can... like that. Nothing, nothing okay. too crazy. You can you, you can't clinch in. Uh, kickboxing either right uh uh-uh. uh they break that shit up gotcha. fast as hell yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. that's one thing the i really gloves, appreciate the gloves in kickboxing mm-hmm. are like the boxing gloves of course yeah. in muay thai well in one fc they use the mma gloves so that's yeah. why you get a lot of knockouts you get a lot of knockouts yeah, that's in crazy FC. people be going <laughs> yeah, that's slick crazy. That's <laughs> and i think to block a high kick with them little ass gloves <laughs> and they be throwing they mm-hmm. they fucking throw they throw fast too. Like them Muay Thai, they are so fast. I love it. And that's why I do need to start watching it more. One thing that like Jason and I always talk about, and that Jace, you almost hit on. I thought you were gonna go there with it, but MM, I think that UFC fans, I'm speaking specifically to UFC fans, the bulk who are like, Oh, I want to stand and bang, blah, 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 blah. Uh, like one thing that Jace always talks about is that like the UFC fan base hasn't been properly introduced to kickboxing and Muay Thai like it like like you were saying earlier that like majority of them are coming from a wrestling base like we're still very pro wrestling like WWE as well aside from like collegiate wrestling Mm -hmm. so like they haven't really they like a lot of them like don't watch haven't you know watch like glory kickboxing and shit like that like Muay Thai so they like don't have like an appreciation for it but when they watch the UFC they want them just to stand and bang and they don't want to see any wrestling or grappling which is silly because you're watching MMA right. and I think that's another good thing that that one has going on for them and hopefully with them having the fights here in the US they'll get more of a US fan base that will start to watch it and be like Oh, okay. I like kickboxing. Like, cause a lot of times I'm just, I tell people like, if you only want to see kickboxing, go watch kickboxing. If you only mm-hmm. want to see movies, like if you only want to see people stand and bang, go watch that shit. But like, if you want to watch MMA where a person can use all of their skills and techniques, then watch MMA. But like, don't sit there and watch a fight and then be like, yeah, but I only want to watch them stand and bang. Let's kickboxing. bang it out, bro. Let's bang. I would, tell, I would tell you this. If you guys, if, Fans like striking. Just give One FC a chance. They come on Fridays, and like I tell Mo, my girl, we sit there and watch. There's a difference between watching. Like I'm watching UFC fight right now. The striking, yeah, they throw hard, but in the Muay Thai fights, they throw hard as fuck. There's a there's yeah. something about the way they throw, and it's fast as fuck, and they throw to like damn near in their lives yeah. in there. They throw hard. It's so crazy, mm-hmm. and you can hear the sounds. Of when they're landing, and even the girls, it's just like, yeah, the, it's a little bit of a different level level in that strike. Maybe, different. maybe in like the MMA, it's kind of the same, but in the Muay Thai and the kickboxing, they throw everything so hard and so fast, and it's so precise. It's amazing. So everybody in here, if y'all watching, please go give One FC a chance, or, or just go YouTube it for a little bit. And if you don't yeah. like it, come back but- and be like CJ, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> to touch on that though the the girls and in, in uh in that organization i feel like if they came and they were able to like grapple a little bit enough just to defend themselves they would fuck a lot of these women up in the ufc i swear it would. i swear it would but one thing that i've heard like as far as uh, like i've heard like mma fighters say is that like 
to touch on what CJ was saying, talking about like how hard and how brutal Muay Thai is, is that like that's why a lot of them do uh, steroids to help with the recovery. Mm -hmm. Um, as opposed to like, cause like you gotta be able to recover a lot faster because you're taking a lot more damage, um, when it comes to the Muay Thai. Even in training, yeah. you'd be so beat the fuck up after training, train, <laughs> you training as if you fighting pretty much. <laughs> That's how it is. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. That's and also the crazy. So when people are hitting the, um, the ice tanks and stuff and hitting cryotherapy and getting massages and stuff, I'm starting to realize like. Oh shit! You really have to do these things in order to continue to 100%. train. Hundred percent. <laughs> it's crazy. Keep on a hundred percent, like the old school shooto box. Yes. You know, you hear about the old shooto box camp. People got knocked out every single day. They went a hundred percent. Percent. They used to bang. Uh, but to go on what you were saying, Sky. And if you look at it, look at Ra Tang just had like his two hundred and thirtieth fight. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, and then when they fight, sure. they're fighting hard as hell. So, 200 fights. Mm -hmm. I seen a girl that had 150 fights, and she was like 22 years old. So, th they <laughs> need that. <laughs> that recovery is necessary. They need the juice. Mm -hmm. Give me the juice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out One FC. I too have to do a better job of watching, it, especially because it is now here on Prime. Um, and YouTube. Like Everybody got YouTube. Yeah, everybody got YouTube, and but I tell you what, we ain't gonna miss DJ. We ain't gonna miss the goat. We ain't right, gonna yeah. miss the goat. I'm in um, that building too, y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's gonna be live. Um, one thing that CJ did want to go on is underrated, overrated, and properly rated. So, all right, all right, all right. I got three. I got three. So, shout out to whoever mm. was in my live earlier today from TikTok. So, we'll start off with the first one. This one's going to be for Sky. What do y'all feel uh, about? Wait, 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 time out, time out. Um, it's all of us, all of us. No, no, I get it. I get it. But the premise of this, um, is it like for their actual UFC rankings or is it just us in our minds? Just how you feel about that person, their careers, their where they're at right now. That's how I feel. Cool. Let's do it. Run it. All right. All right. So I was on TikTok, y'all. So the first person they wrote was Max Holloway. Overrated, underrated, or properly rated? Um, I'm going to say based off the chatter I've been hearing on the internet uh, since he got beat by Volkanovski, oh, I'm going to say that destroyed. he's being, Excuse me. Um, I'm going to say that he's underrated and disrespected. Oh. <laughs> Once again, you have a defending champion. A man who went on a 12 fight win streak, a 13 fight win streak within his division, uh, defended his belt five or defended his uh, title three times. And now all of a sudden, because he can't beat Volkanovsky, he's trash. That's wild. Mm -hmm. And tried for greatness by going up and wait. Yeah. Oh. To get that strap. Yeah. What you feel, Damien? Oh, yeah. I love Max Holloway. Uh, I would I would agree with Sky in the sense that people started disrespecting him just because he lost a couple fights and or a few fights and it's just like <laughs> y'all must have not have been around that long or y'all must have forgot because like that is the goat <laughs> that is one of the goats honestly oh I didn't even know this is I don't let, hey I love Jay's probably gonna come with some bullshit just to fuck with his sister <laughs> I, 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 I'm waiting to keep up. I know I know. <laughs> I got a button right here that says kick speaker. I want you to know. I will veto you. Get crazy if you want to. Go ahead. Go. Uh, I'm going to say that Max Holloway is properly rated. I think that um, he is not that dude as far as the king of the division. He can't be Vulcan House. He just, he's proved it numerous occasions. You know, he can't do it. Um, Except the first time, he definitely won the first fight. Um, so I think he's proper. I, th I think uh, I think he's properly rated. Um, where he is, I think most people regard him in a very high categories as they should. Because I fuck with Max Holloway, all bullshit a shot. Shout out to the Bless Express. But I'm gonna say properly rated. Keep it keep keep it sexual. I agree with you, uh, uh, Jace. I think he's properly rated. Uh, he has the most exciting fights. His output is amazing. He goes out there and bangs. His fights are always exciting. So I think he's properly rated. 
Let's get that motherfucking belt back. <laughs> yeah, the blessed one. He's a, he's a super dope dude, too. Like, that's yes. the thing that people yes. would, like be forgetting about is the people outside of the octagon. And he's a stand up guy. He's a great father. And that man just, he's just a great overall person. And, an, and another <laughs> thing to know, uh, because I am having like a little mini doc on him come out the week of his fight. <gasps> um, Max Holloway does not do drugs, he do not drink alcohol. He's never done it because his mom and his family members were all addicted to meth. And so, like, once he's seen all of that, like, he was like, no. So he doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. So that's another one of them things that, like, that, like, when I really started doing my research, I was like, this, like, when y'all talk about his chin and all of that, that's why. He ain't out partying and doing drugs and hitting kids and babies and doing all this wild stuff <laughs> and ruining his body. So, like, his chin is able to hold up. But, yeah, who's the next one? Uh, they had yeah. Curtis Blades. Curtis mm, Blades. Like underrated. Oh, I think I'm going to say underrated. And the reason I'm going to say underrated is because I think as a community, <laughs> we disrespect him. But he's always right there at the top. The only people that he's lost to was uh was Nganu, who took his hat off. Oh, and, uh, you mm, know, the Black, nah, Beast. Derek Lewis. Black Beast took his hat off. Yeah, hat off Derek too. Lewis but, took like, his yeah. <laughs> Hey, that uppercut. <laughs> but I think I think we do underrate him. I think that he gets. I think that he beats a lot of. Obviously, he beats a lot of people within the division. He's been on multiple winning streaks, and then when he runs into Ngannou and Francis, then it's a wrap for him. But like, yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm, I'm I'm gonna say he's overrated. All he does, all he can do, is wrestle. That's it, and not even like cool wrestling. There is no. <laughs> Dagestani aggression. There is, hey man, I am nearly 300 pounds and I want to be close to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damien, what I you think? Jace. Yeah, I agree with Jace. Mm. I was going to say overrated. Just He just seems very one dimensional and we saw what happens when he goes up against them strikers that he can't have, a, he, he can't take down or just waited too long to take, try to take down. So, man, I, I, I have to say that he's a little bit overrated. I feel like he's one dimensional, but he like like Jay said, he's no Dagestani. You know what I mean? He 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 don't got the wrestling like that, like that. I he he reminds me of a um like a Derek Brunson type. A big look Derek Brunson. Boy's, look at your boy's mm -hmm. record. Come on now. Y'all saying that he's overrated. Look at your boy's UFC record. He's lost to Francis twice. And Derek Lewis, that's it. He's been winning. That's a four fight win streak. That's another. He's on currently on a three fight win streak. Prior to that, one, two, three, four. That's another four. Come on, y'all. Who, who I, we, I don't like Curtis. Who's he fighting? He's fighting everybody they put in front of him. <laughs> Which is like, what? What are the big? He names, beat your though? boy Overeem. He beat Mark Hunt, um, Junior Dos Santos, Alex, Alexander Volkov. Jarzinho, Chris Dawkins, but well, the Tom Aspinall was a was a TKO. But you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like he's he's fighting everybody that they put in front of him. Yeah, but those are also a, a bunch stuff. of losers who you're talking Come on, about. The heavyweight division is Junior Dos Santos. Like that the was the end of his career. Like you can't Come say. Come on, no, 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 no. We're yes, it was. Right. Right. History. Come on. It's a part Alex, of the equation. Alistair Overeem. Come Alistair on. Overeem, and he's not on the horse meat. I mean, come on. Come mm -hmm. on. So so that includes See, but, all of France. That's everybody in the heavyweight had to go through these people. Come on, y'all. Y'all doing revisionist history. But Jace, but he could have stepped in there and also <laughs> lost the fight, too. Exactly. That's how it goes. He could have lost the fight, too. So we can't take away the L's. You know what I'm saying? So from going over that and you reading off the list, I almost was going to go with them. But now I'm going to say he underrated. He wins the he, fights he's supposed to win. We disrespecting him because we don't like his style. He's boring yeah. and he doesn't. Yeah. That's facts. He, You're right yeah. about he's that. He's a heavyweight Bilal Muhammad. <laughs> we don't know nothing about Curtis Blades you know outside what it is? of him wrestling. Shout out to him because the brother has a speech impediment. So he, he doesn't does. like doing interviews and talking like that. So mm. I'm going to say he's a little bit underrated. Underrated. Yeah. So, so the I. next one, the next one is probably going to. Cause some motherfucking drama. <laughs> Colby motherfucking Covington. Colby Damien? Covington. Let's spit some uh, venom. I, I got some venom. I got. I gotta say that he's he's properly rated. I would say he's properly rated in the sense that, that he's at the top of the division. He's only lost to the best 
the best of the best, <laughs> right? I got to say he's properly rated. I don't think anyone is doubting his ability to fight because motherfucker's a fighter. He's not going to knock someone out and sleep somebody, but he's going to put the work in and he's going to make it look like it was a little bit too easy for him. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say properly, properly rated. rated. I, I, I actually respect his his fighting and his fighting style. I respect it. Sky, what you got? Uh, I think that he's properly rated, like, as far as his skills, like, um, you know, he's a cardio machine. He comes in. Pause. How do you know? <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. Stop it. You know, I, I think I think he's properly rated. Um, I think he's a disgusting human being. I don't think he's a good guy at all, but, you know, that's not what we're talking about. So Right. I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah. That's why I said strictly, like, his fighting and his fighting yeah. style. He's properly rated in that sense, yeah. Hmm. Jace. Oh, it's my. <laughs> it's my turn. It's me, the kid. <laughs> um. Okay. So, in like all bullshit aside, um, I will like definitely have to to say that um, Kobe Chaos is definitely under fucking rated. Hundred percent underrated because people get lost in all the sauce. People get lost in all the talk and all the blah 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 after cum shot after cum shot after cum shot. And people forget that this dude, like Damian Sade, really is that dude. Like he really is. (laughs) (laughs) He really is that dude. (laughs) (laughs) Kobe really is that dude. He's only lost to the best of the best of the best of the best. And if I can get the clip of him running out of the uh, octagon, I, I'd put that up too. So I'm going to be a hater and be like, he overrated. <laughs> He's overrated. <laughs> he doesn't fight enough. He doesn't fight enough. So let's do the math. He fought once last year. And he deserves a title shot. He fought once in 21. And he deserves a title shot. He fought once in 2020, and he deserves a title shot. He's two and two in his last four, and I don't give a fuck what the numbers say. That's not a winning record. He's overrated to me. He gets title shots from doing this, but not being in the ring. He's not an exciting fighter. He's not an exciting fighter. What? He's not. He's not an exciting. Stop it. Not- Let- well, hold, on, Stop hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Right. So we can run down. He's a decision machine. He yes. TKO'd an old Woodley by his rib popping out. Right? I watched that fight the other day, and he was nut grabbing and nut hugging. He's a decision <laughs> machine. <laughs> he TKO'd Max Griffin a long time ago. 20, what, 16, I think that was? Uh, but he's a decision yeah. machine. He's an overrated fighter to me because he doesn't fight enough. Maybe if he fought more of the top guys and continue to fight constantly, constantly. We just need him in the ring a little bit more. Step his, in there a little bit more. His best wins was uh, Dos Anjos and Robbie Lawler. And, 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 and since we're doing revisionist history, that's exactly. Robbie Lawler, who old Robbie Lawler, who was going down since we're doing revisionist history. So let's talk about Robbie Lawler. Bro debuted in 1999. A lot of you motherfuckers wasn't even born yet, and y'all be on here Facts. talking. Facts. Facts. 1999. I had two yeah. jobs by the time it was 99. Yeah. In them, nigga. Hey, in them streets in 1999. So yeah. hopefully we get this algorithm going. Come and hate on your boy. Run up these YouTube numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. We want him. Come and bring it. it. Come bring Fuck the heat in wait, the wait. comments. All right, Fuck all right. it. After what? After what CJ said, I'm with CJ. He's overrated. He's overrated. <laughs> Let's go, gang. <laughs> hey, hey, the resume don't lie. The resume don't lie. That resume is beautiful. His resume. No, is it's beautiful. not. Yes, you it is. Fight once a year. You fought once 2021. You fought once 2022. You fought once in 2020. You're two and two right. in your last four. I don't give a fuck who you fought. Go win that fight, bro. He literally fights. Yeah. He he fought. He lost to Kamara Usman. 
At the top, <laughs> the top, at the top, the top. Kamar Usman is at his motherfucking peak. Yes, and also had to wait That's for Kamar. That's lost to. Yeah, underrated. Come on, y'all tripping. Underrated. Y'all, 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 y'all get lost in the noise opposed to the actual I, person. I'm y'all tripping. Sorry. He's been so, shutting people down. These weren't, these weren't. Scott, who was his best, who was his best win? Who was his best win? Robbie Lawler. Unanimous, 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 unanimous. Robbie Lawler. Those are he, all decisions, no he finishes. Fucked, he fucked Robbie Lawler up. Uh, the ref should have stopped As that fight. As he should. As the he ref should have stopped that fight. You talked about aging fighters. Robbie Lawler, who was probably losing, because we know that Kobe don't fight nobody that, that's young or on, or on a winning streak. So let's see, when Robbie Lawler fought him, uh, he was already on a two fight. He lost to fucking Ben Askren. I was there for that fight. I thought it was called a little mm, early. I remember but that. But still, was he was you. coming oh, off. Oh, yeah, 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 Robbie yeah. Robbie Lawler right. had already lost to Rafael Dos Anjos. It was coming off a loss of Ben Askren and then fought, uh, whatchamacallit. So you saying that Robbie wasn't aging when he fought him? Since Robbie, you wanna... was not... Robbie was not Asian when he fought him, no. I said aging. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. I got I got I got one that I want to ask y'all because I'm really actually I've been thinking Shout about out this me. one my damn self. Right? What do y'all think about Jorge Masvidal? Underrated, fairly rated, overrated. overrated. I'll take this overrated. I keep I keep it sweet. I keep it simple. Overrated. You know, he got he, obviously. I'm gonna shout out like he definitely starched Askren, but like that doesn't look that victory doesn't look as good as it did, did, did now, right? He starched fucking Derek Till again. That victory does not look nowhere near as a good right now. You know what I mean? So then, what well, what's left? Him get mopped? Yeah, Ugh. yeah. Ugh. All right. All right. What do you think? Overrated. Overrated? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I'm a we I'm a Masvidal will. guy. I'm a Masvidal yeah. guy. Like I'm a Masvidal said, been, guy. Yeah, I've been watching him since for a long ass time. But you know, you got to put the wins together. Like I always say, you yeah. the people who get in front of you, and that's how he always been. He loses a lot of decisions from way back in the day. Um, close close ass fights, a lot of split decisions where he's in the fight. You know, can go either way. Shout out to Angela Hill, just like her. But um, you know, his skills are there, but the wins don't match. So he's overrated. Yeah, I think if he doesn't, if Nate Diaz doesn't call him out, he's still just a regular journeyman. He never gets a title shot, and he just continues on to to be the journeyman that he is. Um, because the Darren Till knockout was impressive. He went to Darren Till's hometown, knocked him out. He it was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. We already knew that Masvidal had them hands, right? But he wasn't where he was at now. Kills Ben Askren. And that went viral. So he had that little pop. It was going off. But if Nate Diaz, who is one of the best-selling uh, mixed martial artists in the UFC, doesn't hit him up with the, hey, I know my man's a gangster, but he ain't no West Coast gangster, and calls him out, and they do the BMF belt, he doesn't have this level of stardom. Nate Diaz, right. he should be uh, – praising Nate and I just seen him on Ariel's show talking shit about Nate like he should really be giving Nate the love because Nate gave him the rub you got the rub from Nate red penny mm-hmm. night yeah mm-hmm. especially literally though especially yeah. literally. You, you got a title fight off of beating Nate Diaz like 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 Nate says everybody that fights me gets a title shot <laughs> that's facts that's facts facts I'm gonna facts. say I'm gonna say I'm gonna go against the grain. I'm gonna say that he's properly rated because I was I'm looking at his I'm looking at his record. Look who he's been losing to. My, my he's been losing to to some of the top guys that we were just talking about who's still actively fighting all the time, except for Kobe. But <laughs> <laughs> but all right, all right. So I used to watch this fool back in the day when he was fighting in the backyard. I was Run like the fame. I had to be like I had to be like freshman in high school or something watching this fool. So I pretty much watched him before he became this man, right? And so I kind of have that nostalgia with me when I'm thinking about Jorge Masvidal because he was – where was he? He was at uh, the what, the other organization. Yeah, Strike fighting force. with people like Paul Daly, you know, 
fighting fighting other big names that are like big people. So he's been fighting some some tough competition. I would say his whole career, and I gotta give him respect for that. And he make it he made it damn near to the top of the of the UFC leaderboards <laughs> or or division or the the ranking. So. Yeah, he's been on a few. He's been on a few losing streaks, and he's probably going to lose this next one. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I feel like he's properly rated. I feel like he he deserves to be in the place that he's at, one hundred percent. Because he he is a fun fighter. Ah, I, shit, I won't that's... miss a Masvidal fight. I will not miss a Masvidal fight. Me neither. Me neither. You know, that's like I said. Like <laughs> I've been watching him. Me and my girl, we watched him fight here in San Diego versus Gilbert Melendez. That was a championship fight. Gilbert Melendez. Mm-hmm. Oh, then we should talk about him too. Like people. I'm gonna do a TikTok video about him, but um, Gil Gil is a as a dog. Nobody, he's one of them slept on ass fighters. You know what I'm saying? Um, he lost the fight. He he gets in them places and he loses. So I I don't know. I overrated properly. Sometimes he gets a lot of shots that he doesn't really deserve. We should talk about that yeah. word in a little bit too. Um, but like right now, say he does go beat Burns, then what happens? Mm. He gets the title. Hey, that's he crazy. The <laughs> that's crazy. You that's know, crazy. so <laughs> that, oh man. And that's the thing. That it, it could happen. Burns gets sat down by jabs. Masvidal mm-hmm. throws pretty jabs. But the thing is, I wonder if his focus is in training and fighting. You know, he has the game bread fights going right. on. You know, he's probably doing paperwork right. in the back end. So hopefully he's coming with his best. He's in his hometown fighting too. We see how, I don't know. Hey, sometimes you know. get that juice. Uh, one thing yeah. I did want to say, if y'all haven't already, check out Valentina Shevchenko's interview on Ariel Hawani's show, The MMA Hour. Jace, <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to check that out because Valentina Shevchenko, she's still in La La Land. Like, she still is in oblivion as to what happened in that fight and, like, She's talking about that fight the same way she was talking about the Tyler Santos fight. Like, like she was in complete control. Like everything was like, it's wa- watch the fight, watch the interview. We got uh, any hot takes this week? No, I, I don't think we got no hot takes this week. Um, and actually, this is our time, so we might as well just go yep. ahead and wrap it up. We don't have uh, any main fights, but we will definitely be back next week. Uh, prepared for UFC 287. You looping your that boy, jab too much. Your boy Alex, not you trying to tell the fighter how to fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your boy Alex uh, Pereira is taking on Israel Adesanya. We're going to be hype and real. This, I'm pretty sure that Jace is going to have a hot take uh, some somewhere and, in there. And I don't want to hear his bullshit all next week. Oh, fuck. Now, I don't need that negative energy now. You oh, too, Sky! Wait a minute. And before, no, no, no. I'm going with Izzy this time. I'm going with Izzy this time. I'm going with Izzy. But one thing that I do want to say is that Jace is a pussy. Let me tell y'all. Jace is a pussy. Oh, 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 oh my God. Because last week, I am all what three I of us all three of us did our bets, right? You know, we all was going for Cheeto. And he said, I'm going to do it at the end. Then me and him got into this big, long thing about fighter pay. And I'm watching it back, and I'm like, oh, he didn't give his pick. So I text him, because y'all remember on the John Jones fight, he was like, I told, I called you and told you I had a dream that Jones is going to blah, 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 right? <laughs> so this time, I was giving him factual proof in the text message. I'm like, hey, go ahead and give me your prediction. This was about an hour and a half before the main fight. This dude, and then I text him again. I'm going to put the screenshot up here, too. I'm right here. <laughs> I text him again, and I say, come on, give me your give me your prediction. <laughs> After the fight's over, he texts Corey. Oh, LOL. hell no. Nah. <laughs> Corey, hell LOL. Nah. And then I said, I roll my eyes, and he goes, oh, I, I don't know why that's just now, Cindy. He, like, he's nutting up, y'all. He's nutting up. Listen, okay, I I live in rural Minnesota, so sometimes it takes a little bit for for the text to send, okay? And as well, like, okay, I don't got Verizon like some of y'all niggas. I got Metro PCS. If you got the Metro PCS, nigga, hey, okay, no plugs, no know. plugs. They gotta pay us. They gotta pay us. Ain't no plugs, y- y- y'all. Shit. That ain't a plug. <laughs> That's the reality. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm a 
Metro is not the way to go, but the way my balance <laughs> works right now is that's that's the way to go. So hey, but listen up. If they want to pass, we'll we'll say that name a little bit more. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you check. what I'm drinking. <laughs> yeah. So y'all make sure y'all apply some pressure because Jace, I mean Jason lost. Uh what was it? Jace off loss. Maybe next week could be better. Next week we're gonna come up with like some actual solid picks. You know, I um we, we know who CJ going with. We know CJ <laughs> Listen, I was I was the champion last year of accumulation, and by the end of this year I'll be the champion again. If if you'll actually give some picks and stop the champ around. last year, I'll be the champ again and steal. Shout out to Kobe. Okay. How if he's not nothing now? He ain't never been a he champion. Be. He was. Cut the tape. Cut the tape, Sky. Let's get out of here. Cut the tape. <laughs> All right, we're out of here. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.